Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. The, my name is Erica, and I'm going to start releasing my dreams that I've been having, um, whether they're recent or past. Um, today is May 15th, and I was just going to get into the dream. <coughs> so, um... This was a dream from my hometown, um, the reservation that I grew up at. Um, so in this dream, they were like, it was like, okay, so I was in where I grew up in the little town, but in the little town next to it, like, they made a video or something. Like, they were giving away clothing donations. And the place and the people that were giving them away and doing the thing was... Like, we knew... that I knew those people. And then the girl... The girl... I was with this girl. And I don't know why I dreamt of her. I don't know why she's she came to me in my dreams. But I feel like, in a sense, it's kind of like she was guiding me to do this or something. Like, she... And she would be the perfect person to do this because when she was alive, she was, like, so, like, cool. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you just, I don't know. Like, sometimes you meet people and they're just, like, cool and fun and, you know, just, you know, like that. And anyway, so she's no longer here. So it's kind of weird. But um, so anyway, me and her were in this community and we're, like, watching a video of these people and this other like little it was probably about 20 minutes away from where we were at and she was like let's go over there let's go over there let's go look at what they got so um so hold on i'm gonna write something Okay, so, um, and so anyway, so she was like, let's go over there, let's go over there, like just how she was when she was alive, that's how she was in this dream, you know, like fearless, fun, and just cool, all around cool girl, and so in this video, no, so before we head over there, we were watching this video, it seemed like from a big screen though, and this other girl that I knew, and she knew too, I'm assuming she knew her. She was in the dream. I'm not going to say names, but she was in this dream at this house. And, like, I, I like, like, for some reason, she was, like, emphasized. And so, like, she was trying to keep her face out of the camera. And then, like, they put the camera, like, on her. And then, like, she, like, looked around. And her eyes looked super glossy. And, like, she looked... She looked like she was, so my impression looked like she was under a lot of warfare. Like, it looked like she was going through, like, a spiritual warfare. And so I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't know. And you really have to have, like, the, the heart for this. But anyway, so so sh her eyes looked glossy, and I felt like she was going through warfare. Jesus says she is. As I was writing this, he's like, she is. And... <clears throat> So me and the girl, we ended up walking to the the people on the video. We walked to their house. It just seemed like right like down the street or something, and like the like like coming into the house, it was so weird because it was like. Anytime I feel like so okay so we we approached the house and the mom was like semi okay and then the sister was like like why are you guys here like you know what I mean like she just had that kind of attitude and then the girl was like 
she just didn't really care. She's just like, oh, what's up? You know, like, you know. And there was, okay, so we walk in and we're all like sitting there in the living room. And then there was like, there was a little guy there and I offered him, I said, I said, do you wanna, or he was, I think he was asking for food or something. And I said, do you want an apple or a banana? And I remember like I was cutting an apple something. I don't know, it was really weird. I was like, do you want an apple or a banana? And then like we are sitting on this couch and me, that girl and that little guy were like right here. And there was like a demonic cat, like a possessed cat. And like it flared up, like it got evil and it was trying to bite everybody. But for me, like when it come by me, like I, first of all, I wasn't even scared of it. And then like, it, but it tried to like show itself. Like it tried to intimidate me and scare me. And it was like biting, like viciously, like biting and cr like walking and like biting, trying to like, you know, like harm, like trying to like make me fearful or something, but I clearly wasn't. And right. So, so then the, it kind of like shifts over to the girl. She was like sitting in front of a TV. Her sister was over there and her mom was over here. So I said, I, I asked her, I said, I said, you should, you should, I think I asked to pray for her or something along those lines. And I said, you should ask, or I said, you should accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Something like that. Or, and, or let me pray for you and ask him to accept and, you know, ask you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Something like that. And... And so, like, after we said that, like, her mom and them were like, yeah, yeah, you should, you should, you know, like that or something, like, agreeing, right? And so then, like, I walked over to her, or she just kind of, like, shook her head, like, yeah, like, I do accept him, whatever. And then I walked over her, over to her, and I looked at her, and she had, like, you know, tears sitting, like, on her eyes. And, um... She was crying and I started to cry because it was beautiful to see her knowing that she needed Jesus. You know, um, sometimes. And so I gave her a hug and then um, we kind of like said goodbye to all of them and then like left out the door. But I feel like I left out crying because I was too overwhelmed by my emotions and like sadness, not, not sadness, but kind of like tears of joy to see somebody like, you know, I don't know. It's crazy how like, it's one way to understand that like, so whenever I went through my spiritual battle, my warfare, like, I knew I needed Jesus. I knew that the only thing that could save me or help me was Jesus. And everybody I would meet, and I think that's the worst thing to do is, like, um, go around trying to ask people, like, am I good? Am I good? Like, in, in your eyes, am I okay? And then, like, you know, they say the surface level thing, but there's still the elephant in the room. It's like, you know, and you don't know how to explain it, but you're seeking that validation because of how horrible you feel on the inside, you know, or you're staying in like these toxic domestic violence relationships that don't even serve you. It's like you're just going deeper and deeper, you know, and that's kind of what the enemy wants, you know, and... So that was kind of um, the gist of my dream. It, I feel like the girl that passed away, but she was in my dream. <clears throat> she was just the way, like, it was kind of like she was like um, a guiding angel for me. Like, you know, she guided me to that house. Like, if it wasn't, but we were like, so before... Like, those clothing donations were outside of their house or something. And then there was a lot of people in and out of their house. And then we go up there and we, like, start looking through things. And the girl, like, you know, I was kind of, like, following her in a sense. And then she kind of, like, led me, you know. And so I feel like she was, like, a guiding, like, a, a guiding angel a little bit. And like I said, like, 
I don't know. It's just sad that those people are gone, you know, because you don't meet people like that a lot, you know, in this world. And I'm not disregarding, like, people and I'm not trashing, but you know, if you know, you know, you know. Uh, just like, I feel like I want to cry because, like, it's just sad that she's gone, you know. And it's weird, like, anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but. So the scripture that God gave me for this dream is Psalms 122. And I think I'm going to read it in both um, the Living Bible and the King James Version. I'll read the, the Living Bible first, and then I'll read the King James Version. So it says, I was... This is Psalm 22, 122, 122. I was glad for the suggestion of going to Jerusalem, to the temple of the Lord. Now we are standing here inside the crowded city. All Israel, Jehovah's people have come to worship as the law requires to thank and praise the Lord. Look, there are the judges holding court beside the city gates, deciding all the people's arguments. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. O Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity in your palaces. This I ask for all. This I ask for the sake of all my brothers and my friends who live here. And I and may there be peace as a protection to the temple of the Lord. Okay, so. And then this is the King James Version of Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within, within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Wow, this is so crazy. says, whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be, be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions sake, I will now say peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. So when he gave me this, I was just like rejoicing because so, you know, um, I feel like the, the, so what I got from this was like the, you don't know who's going to receive the gospel, you know, with gladness, with tears, with like, um, you know, with, you know, like there's people out there suffering and like, you know, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite and tell you to go and save all the souls that you can because I'm not doing that my my own self. But what I will say is that <clears throat> I feel like from my, and it's all of the plan of the devil, you know, like you try to, like it's all over YouTube too. It's not just like something that I'm saying or thinking or imagining, you know, it's like whenever you try to like tell somebody about the Lord, like somebody will come in and like interject what you're trying to do. You know, and and whenever you could see it, like you could easily get discouraged, especially being a new Christian, like, you know, especially being, you know, somebody like that. But then you just have to, like, keep going. You know, you just have to get the good news out there, because I feel like this dream basically told me, like, you don't know who's suffering with what behind closed doors and that they may receive Jesus with more than welcoming to him. You know, and we just don't know and we can't just judge based off of appearance or circumstances or whatever, you know. And don't re worry about righteous people or religious people, I meant. Um, okay, so I'm going to break this down. It says, I was glad for the suggestion of going to Jerusalem. Like, this, per these people will be glad when you meet them with like, hey, do you want to come to church? Or, hey, do you want to... You know, do you want to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know? And, 
And then now, like it says, and now we are standing here inside the crowded city, all Israel, Jehovah's people. So now that you've accepted Jesus, now you are in Jerusalem, in the city where God will protect you. You know, you're under his protection now. And um, have come to worship the law as the law requires. See, so like, and I know, oh my God. I'm trying not to let my emotions get the best of me in this video because I'm trying to make these videos, but it always seems like this is just like, oh, God, oh, my gosh. You know how, like, nowadays it says, like, we are the church. No matter where you go, you are the temple of the Lord, this, that, whatever. I feel like God does require us to go to church. I mean, for me, whenever I first came to this city, like, I jumped around from church to church, couldn't really find my... Like, you know, my tribe of people that, like, accepted me, you know, some of the churches were, like, dead on the inside, you know, like, there was no spirit there. Then, like, you know, oh, my gosh. Anyway, the, anyway, either way it goes, like, I feel like people that are freshly coming to Christ, they should have a place to go and feel welcomed, you know. It fucking pisses me off. But, you know, um, because especially whenever somebody's coming and, like, new to their faith and then, like, they go to these these churches and then <laughs> then these people are just like, you know, it's so crazy. As the law requires, you go to the church, you know, because you love him, right? <laughs> to thank and praise the Lord. Look, there are the judges holding court beside the city gates, deciding all the people's arguments. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So pray for the peace of Jerusalem means like, pray for like all God's people to be overcome with God's peace. You know, um, I want to read another scripture that kind of ties into what I'm talking about. So, you know, in, in these days, like we need peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, because I feel like there's going to come a time where we're going to need more peace than what we really realize. Um, it, I mean, it's already happening, but <clears throat> peace of Jerusalem, like, you know, may all who love this city of Jerusalem prosper, you know, um, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity within your palace. So within your walls, like, so, so the air, the Erica before Jesus. So this Erica, I didn't have boundaries. I didn't know my worth. I didn't care. I let people treat me any way. Um, you know, my walls were basically rubble. I didn't have no security system in place, right? The air cut in Jesus, like, you know, I'm prospering. Jesus is covering me. I have life. I'm, I'm a new creature. I think different. I move different. You know, I, I have a purpose. I'm walking in purpose, all of these things. And that to God is like prosperity within your palace, you know? Like there's your walls are your body, your walls as your like security system for like your mind. You know, you you cover your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul with um with the word of God. You know, um, what is it called? Um, <sighs> Ephesians six through ten, I think. You know, the whole put on on the whole mar whole armor of God, saturating yourself with the blood of Jesus, even if you have to do it like fifty times over. Say, I command my spirit to drink the blood of Jesus. I command my spirit to drink the blood of Jesus. I cover my children with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the most powerful thing in this world to protect you, your family, your kids, your finances, anything that you need protection over. There's some really controversial things that I want to talk about because I feel like I don't hear nobody else talking about it, so might as well be me, right? You know, and I'm not doing it for that because I feel like nobody just wants to talk about it. And it's, it's happening and it's going on. I heard, actually, I did hear one person talk about it, come to think about it. But after that, like, there was no real teaching on it. So I think, like, I want to teach on it somehow. Um, it says, Oh, Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls. So, like, if you have up a security system, your walls, you, so say you take your rubble, you build up your walls, 
you know, you don't let people in, you don't expose yourself to demonic things, you're fasting, you're praying, you're like, you know, covered with the blood, you're anointing your home, your house, you're, you, you're working a job, or maybe you're cultivating a business, you're doing all these things, you're putting up security and peace, that security of those walls are like a fortified wall of bronze, it says in the Bible, like you, you will not be shaken, basically, um, prosperity in your palaces and that's what god really wants for all of us especially if you lived in poverty and sadness and sickness and all kinds of stuff like god wants to bring you out of that and restore your whole life and build it up and it's not about riches and money but it is about hard work um perseverance resiliency overcoming consistency all of that um and i know people think that that sounds like a hard thing but if you start today like, don't look at, like, oh, well, the, the world's ending, like, whatever, whatever. You have to get rid of that completely and just begin today. Um, It says, this I ask for the sake of all my brothers and my friends who live here. May there be peace. May there be as a peace. <sighs> as a per May there be peace as a protection to the temple of the Lord. So may your temple feel peace, you know. Um, may your life be peaceful and not full of, like, hell from the devil and stuff. Because, you know, and I don't know, I just almost started crying because that dream was amazing. Um, so I wanted to read... I want to read, um, okay, I'm going to read this. It's John chapter 16, verse 8. I think it's verse 8 through 10, actually. Verse 8 through 11, John 16, 8 through 11. It says, and then when he has come, he will convince the world of its sin and of the availability of God's goodness, and of deliverance from judgment. The world's sin is unbelief. Unbelief in me. There is righteousness available because I go to the Father, and you shall see me no more. There is deliverance from judgment because the prince of this world has already been judged. So to me, <clears throat> there was a different scripture and I don't understand. Maybe I didn't write it down. I must have not wrote it down. But it was pretty scary. Because um, it was pretty scary because of the fact that Um, so unbelief in, in Jesus. So like, you know, and it says, says Jesus is going to come and convince the world, everybody. So the world is everybody, you, me, he, she, we, your family, my family, my enemies, your enemies, you know, my children, their children, everybody, everybody in the world is going to be convinced of their sin. Your sin will be cast out into the open for everybody to see and to know about. And and mainly it's for you to know about, to work on it, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, it's, you know, convince the world of his sin. And so he's going to tell you, okay, like, this is where you're sinning, but this is how you can get it together. You know, this.